one interconnected ocean, a vast blue expanse critical to life on Earth. And there's no better animal to represent the story of the ocean with all its splendor and uncertainty than the killer whale, or as it's scientifically known, the Orsinus orca. The orca lives in every corner of the ocean, from the Arctic to the Atlantic, the Southern to the Indian, to the mighty Pacific and beyond. This whale's story is the ocean's story, and it is one we all share. Welcome to SeaWorld's Orca Encounter. My name is Caitlin, and I'm so honored to introduce you to this intriguing and majestic animal. quite like seeing a killer whale up close and learning about them and their natural behaviors. We hope this orca encounter gives you a better understanding of these amazing animals and all that they represent. While they are found in every ocean, orcas living off the coast of Iceland are quite different than those near Costa Rica. In fact, there are at least 10 types or ecotypes of killer whales. An ecotype describes the differences between killer whale size, physical form, prey, social structure, and habitat. As you can see, the differences are subtle, but noticeable when compared side by side. Orcas are adapted perfectly to their environments. And even the whale's black and white coloration has a purpose. It camouflages the outline of their bodies in the water, making it easier for them to surprise and catch their prey. Viewed from above, the black of the whale blends in with the dark depths of the ocean. When viewed from below, the orca's white bellies match the brighter surface of the water, blending with the light above, giving them the perfect camouflage. area in front of the white patch camouflage from thrashing prey. The fin on his back is called a dorsal fin, which helps to stabilize orcas while they are swimming, and it also helps to regulate their body temperature. The 
flippers on either side of his body are called pectoral flippers and are mainly used for stopping and steering. Pectoral flippers have five bony digits inside them, just like the human hand. The lobes at the end of the whale's tail are called tail flukes. Tail flukes are the killer whale's engine, propelling them up to speeds of nearly 30 miles an hour, as fast as some of our speedboats. And they swim the fastest and use the most power from propelling their nearly 10,000 pound bodies up and out of the water. Killer whales are highly social animals with a well-defined social structure. An orca pod is always led by a female. Though just half the size of her male counterpart, she is in charge. It's all about attitude, not size. Because they live and work as a group, orcas need to communicate with sounds and body language. Orcas use clicks for echolocation or navigation. Whistles to socialize in the pod. And calls for group coordination and hunting. Vocal development studies here at SeaWorld show that early on, calves learn vocalization from their mothers. But as they grow, they learn from others close to them as well. This is a bottlenose dolphin call that Shuka learned and even taught other killer whales here at SeaWorld. In fact, orcas are the largest members of the dolphin family. Whales here and in the wild use vocalization to communicate all the time. Like all animals, killer whales use body language as part of their communication. Pectoral slaps could be used to show dominance and to get noticed. For example, a mother may use a peck slap to get her calf's attention. But when they really want to be heard, they preach. Spy hopping is how killer whales get a better view of their surroundings and coordinate when they hunt. Slaps are another form of communication that killer whales use in the wild. Killer whales work together to rear their young, protect their pod, 
and most importantly, pursue and catch their prey. Every day they cooperate to survive in the wild oceans of the world. The orca's hunting techniques are as varied as the whales themselves. Norwegian killer whales will circle herring, herding them together. The whales use sounds to coordinate with each other and to disorient the herring. With the fish confused and contained, the whales stun them with their powerful tail flukes, making for an easy meal. In this example, we see the larger male orcas surround a sperm whale forming a perimeter, while the females continue to drive the whale forward until it reaches exhaustion. The calves then move in to join the adults in the group. Whatever their prey, killer whales always cooperate and hunt together, making them a highly successful predator. everyday life for killer whales. It's how they teach their young to hunt and to practice their skills as they grow. Orcas spend lots of time interacting and showing off their playful side, both in the wild and right here at SeaWorld.
porpoising is when a killer whale swims fast to the surface, breaking up the water just briefly. ride in the wake of a boat or when surfing in a wave. Orcas like to be touched and will often rub their bellies on rocks when they can. You'll also see killer whales in the wild imitating each other. We see it here at SeaWorld all the time. The whales are constantly mimicking and learning from one another. properly and that our older whales are maintaining a healthy weight. We can even take a breath sample from their blowholes. These behaviors are only possible because of the relationships that we've built day after day right here at SeaWorld. Today I would like to introduce you all to a very special whale named Corky. At 54 years old, she is our oldest whale, but she's also one of our most athletic. She's inspired thousands of guests over her time here, and she has a very special relationship with all of her trainers. She's participated in research studies as well that have helped her wild counterparts. We encourage the whales here each day to learn new things, to engage and stimulate their minds. Diet, exercise, and of course play help keep the whales in great shape. The whales here at SeaWorld have helped killer whales in the wild by participating in many research studies. One ongoing study monitors the whale's heart rate and breathing to understand how marine noise pollution from ship engines and other sources affect wild populations. 
In another study, scientists from NOAA, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, took measurements of the killer whales living here, including pregnant whales. By comparing these measurements with drone footage of killer whales in the wild, scientists are able to monitor the wild population's nutritional and reproductive states. Other research has been done here at SeaWorld on the mother whale's milk composition. This research will help create an effective model to understand how toxins in the ocean impact wild killer whales and their milk supply. What we learn from the whales in our care every day is actively helping whales in the wild survive. And just by being here today, you've supported our rescue, research, and conservation efforts all around the world. If we work together, like the killer whale, we can protect the future of the Orsinus orca and this beautiful planet that we all share.